Hey, Aaron Rabinowitz here for Red Giant TV. Recently, like a large portion of moviegoers, Seth Worley saw Mission Impossible 4. Unlike other moviegoers, though, he was inspired to recreate the Dubai Sandstorm effect. So in this tutorial, Seth will show you how to create the effect using Trap Code Particular. And before I forget, special thanks to Ted Vardalos of Kelowna, Canada for the use of some imagery which we'll share in the project file. Take it away, Seth. Ah, now to be outside. Step one, shoot footage. Here's the footage that we shot. Uh, Ben's just running, there's no sand. Sorry, guy. yeah, no sand, we tried. So, here's what we do. We're gonna bring it into After Effects, organize our comp. Uh, we have a standard comp here, here's my footage, and for the sake of organization, I'm gonna rename everything. Uh, first, I'm gonna duplicate the layer. Uh, I'll rename the bottom layer, plate, reference, uh, we'll have that for reference. I'll rename this second duplicate, uh, this first duplicate really, uh, keyed, and then I will duplicate keyed. I'll rename it uh, plate keyed slash mask, and uh, then I'll duplicate that one and call it uh, plate roto. Now, once we've done that, we're going to track the motion of one of our plates. So we're going to use our reference to track our motion. Go over here, click track motion. And uh, we will take our track point, and this uh, motion tracking is going to be for our dust in the background. So we're going to track our something in the background. We pick this building corner, and we motion track. <laughs> Done. Now we uh, create a new null object. Rename that null object tracking null. And then let's uh, edit our target tracking null. Click Apply, click OK, and now our null moves with the corner of the building. Perfect. All right, we'll come back to that. Now we're going to key the skies. We're going to use a uh, primat keyer to uh, key uh, to. Uh, we're going to right there the sky, the bluish of the sky. We're going to start with smooth screen from Key Correct. Drop that on there. Use our dropper. To select the sky. And that uh, makes it a little more of a solid color. Turn up our hue tolerance, our lightness tolerance. Make that sky as much of a solid color as we possibly can. Now we're going to uh, use Primat here to drop that onto our keyed plate. And we're going to, uh, you know, use just this. I seriously am always impressed with Primat and how significantly easy it is to use. Uh, clean up our background here, our little specs. Uh, and then we will. I'll do the same with our foreground by selecting building wall and the streets. Um, and then there's still a little bit of bluish in the windows up there. So I think we're going to go over clean background, select as much of that as possible. Brilliant. Go over here and uh, uh, type eagle blur, I mean edge blur, dropped edge blur onto there. And it looks pretty good. Now we're going to select all of those things, copy them, and uh, paste them into our keyed mask layer. Now we're going to mask the city. Our keyed mask layer selected, we're going to use our pen tool here to outline this area that is beyond the, the road and the uh, foreground buildings. Uh, and it's just kind of a generic rough um, mask, nothing too specific. We're going to go down here and, and edit that mask uh, by turning up the feather. Uh, set it to subtract, so it's actually subtracting that background. Turn the feather up, etc. And then we're gonna, you know, keyframe the path, the mask path, to move, you know, with the shot. Uh, just, you know, vaguely, and that looks, you know, good enough. So then, uh, what we do is uh, we take our plate keyed, go down, go to the first frame, click our timer on opacity, and go ahead to where we want that building to disappear and click zero. And now that building will slowly disappear and that's gonna make it look like it's dissolved, you know, like the like it's kind of fading out into the sand. 
Uh, now we're going to lose some of the blue we have. We're going to apply an adjustment layer because we still have a lot of this blue around the uh, windows and stuff. So we're going to rename that adjustment layer Colorista. And then let's live up to our promises and drop Colorista onto the layer named Colorista. And go down to primary hue saturation level uh, and bring our teal or cyan, whatever it is, in dark blue, bring teal and blue in to the middle on the saturation wheel and on the lightness wheel. And as you see, we lose all of that nasty, those nasty blue edges. Cool. So now we have to roto bin. So uh, we're going to take that layer, double click. We're going to make sure our resolution is at full. We're going to double click on the roto plate uh, and then select our roto brush and we're going to select bin. And then this is a rather tedious process of just basically taking it, you know, frame by frame and, you know, clicking alt clicking the areas that you don't want to remain selected and then clicking the areas you want to remain selected. I frequently say in these tutorials that, you know, like it doesn't have to be perfect and that's just because I'm lazy. Like, honestly, I mean, it can be perfect, it probably should be perfect, but mine's not. So when it's done, click freeze, which can kind of take a long time. So, you know, just sit back and watch it freeze. And uh, there it is, all rotoed. Now we're going to drop in uh, some stock images uh, to create our background dust. We have these stock images here, these uh, photos provided to us by Mr. Uh, Ted Vardalos. Vardalos, so thank you for those, sir. We're gonna, I'm going to like use this one. I'm going to drop this down uh, underneath the keyed plate and above the muted reference plate. Double click on it and go in here and we're going to apply a liquify filter. And then uh, we're going to just do some liquefying, some warping. Uh, hold down command and move the mouse up and then I'll make the brush size larger. And we'll select this top, you know, part of the plume of smoke and we will uh, bulge it out some. It just sounds weird to say and feels weird saying it too. Uh, this rotational spinny part, where we'll use this. And we'll twist the uh, plumes of smoke around a bit. And uh, you just kind of want to give it a very naturalistic, um, you know, kind of how you think naturalistic over time. You'd see smoke, you know, moving, passing through air and the sky, and etc. I keep saying smoke. I, I mean, I mean sand. Just you know, it looks like smoke. Can't fool me, sand. Once it's done, we're gonna keyframe some stuff. Um, we're actually going to keyframe the distortion percentage. So uh, we'll go down here to the uh, where we want you know the smoke to stop moving or where it can probably stop moving. Click the timer, leave it at 100%. Go to the beginning of the timeline and set it to zero. So now over the course of your timeline, it will move. It will liquefy and grow. Awesome. Now we come back into our regular comp. We move the this you know this uh, stock image now we move this down uh, position it to where like the smoke is kind of you know rising up from the city we will parent it to our tracking null so it moves with the building ever so subtly and it's liquefying over the course of time we also want to keyframe the scale let's start at 77 go to the end of the timeline and set it at 100 so it grows over the course of the shot and uh do some tweaking here and there, and that looks pretty cool. Now, uh, go over here, and we're going to find hue saturation. Drop that down there on there. And we're going to click colorize. And uh, get it to where it's kind of an orange, orange, yellow, orange, closer to orange. And then turn the saturation down until you see fit. Now we get to the particles. We're going to create a new solid, and we're going to call that solid particular. And uh, let's actually add to this particular plume background. So can you guess this will be our background plume? And once it's there, let's bring it down below the keyed layer, but above our stock image layer. Let's uh, find particular and drop it down onto the solid. And now I've already made some presets on Red Giant People that you can use here in this tutorial uh, called Sandstorm. We're going to be using Sandstorm plume background. Uh, for this, you see it grows like that. 
Let's create a new solid. Call it particular plume foreground. And that will be our foreground plume of smoke. Plumes. Eh, who cares? We'll put this one be uh, between the roto and the keyed mask layer. Drop particular on. Go down and get our sandstorm plume foreground. And now uh, you can see this guy kind of grows more closer to the ground behind Ben. We can do some customizing here. Let's actually move it on the timeline to where it's happening a little, it's coming in a little later. It's not as close to Ben. You don't want it to be so close to Ben that it feels like it's an effect and like it's canned. You want it to feel more naturalistic. If it's right at Ben's edge the entire time, it feels fake. Now there's several ways you can change the color of these particles. You can go actually into the particular and into the particles and select color and, you know, use the dropper to select our the color we currently have for our background for our stock images uh, or you can be lazy and use the hue saturation filter and turn the saturation down from when I already have the color set up uh, I'm gonna create a new solid call this one particular flakes and these are uh, some flakes I actually created these from the snow preset in particular the snowfall preset and I'm actually, and I just, you know, messed with the wind and the gravity and then the color of the particles. So we'll keep that at the top of the comp. Now we want to uh, apply a shadow to our foreground plume. So let's actually um, go in, par select our, part our particular plume uh, layer, apply RG shadow, make sure our axis is aligned at the top, and make sure our light is front lit. And let's uh, e uh, adjust the shadow using these points and such. Uh, to be some, you know, right below and, uh, you know, basically where it looks like the smoke, the foreground plumes are, you know, projecting a shadow onto the ground. It's really a, just, it, it's subtle and it helps sell the effect. It's nothing major. Step 10, sell out, put a huge flare on the shot. Uh, apply an adjustment layer, rename it, flare. Now, okay, I'm not dumb. I have to tell you that. I see this shadow right here. And the truth is, the sun really is behind Ben. But there's a giant building back behind me, the cameraman, that is reflect that's made entirely of glass, reflecting the sun onto Ben. So that is why the shadow is there. So, you know, when I add this flare up here as the sun, I'm not just making up a sun. That's generally where the flare is. I mean, where the sun is. But where the flare is, sorry, that's the name of my next film. Where the flare is. So anyway... Uh, we'll go here. We'll apply light factory. Drop that onto our flare adjustment layer. Go up to options. Click load. And we're going to navigate our way to our guru presets, to Harry Frank's the guru presets for light factory because they're sweet. Cali sunset we will select. And uh, we're going to mute out the main disc of here and we're going to slightly desaturate the glow ball. Now, it's a very dangerous process that... I think you have to be 18 to do. So, once we've desaturated the glow ball, once we've survived that, uh, we're going to take our tracking null, duplicate it, and rename our duplicate of the tracking null, flare null. I know, guys. So, now we're going to make sure this flare is down below colorista. And we're going to go into fl our flare, and we're going to find the light source location. And we're going to alt click on our light source location on the timer. And we're going to parent that to the position of the flare, flare null. Now, okay, go to flare null, select position, and so select it in a way that all of these keyframes light up yellow. And then drag that null carefully over here, and it drags all the keyframes over there. Pretty sweet. So now our flare. Where the flare is, is up here in the corner. Then go to expression. I'm sorry, go to brightness. I'll click on it and apply wiggle. Parentheses 5, 10. 5 is our frequency. Or 20, maybe. 20 is our amount. So it's flickering. And it is moving. Beautiful. Now, this is an optional feature. Completely optional feature. Uh, we can shake the whole thing up if we want. It gets a little complicated with the flare. That's why it's totally optional. Now, we're going to select everything, and we're going to pre-comp it. And you see, when we do that, though, our flare moves around as if it's, you know, baked into this two-dimensional shot. 
So instead, pre-comp everything but our but colorista flare and flare null, and call that pre-comp sandstorm pre-comp. And you pre-comp by holding. That's right. Now, once we pre-comp, select CC reptile, drop it onto our sandstorm pre-comp. Select unfold, expand right, expand left, expect down, and and expand up. I think I said expect in there. Sorry, I moved fast. And that's so that we can shake the thing around, and we will have some bleed room. Now. We want to go uh, to our flare here, and you see it's. We're gonna have to make uh, when we wiggle the parameters. When we, basically, when we wiggle the shot, we want the uh, source of the flare to wiggle, but we don't want the flare itself to wiggle too, like that down here. These bottom little ovals and stuff. So let's rename our tracking null wiggle null. Get rid of all of our keyframes. Um, uh, alt click position. Type a uh, wiggle ten ten. So that's wiggling. Awesome. And then we're going to parent our sandstorm precomp to that wiggle null. So it is wiggling the same place the flare is. So now you can see it looks cool. Step 12, color correct. Apply adjustment layer. Rename vignette. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to apply a misfire vignette because I like it. And a uh, new adjustment layer. Let's uh, do Mojo. Then let's drop Mojo. Which sounds like an illegal activity. The next step is to sell out even more by pretending you shot an anamorphic. We're going to pre-comp all this crap. Sandstorm. Uh, wiggle slash color. Pre-comp. And then go as long as you want. Uh, layer new. Adjustment layer. Rename that widescreen or letterbox. Widescreen, letterbox. Let's do that. Apply magic bullet frames letterboxer. Go up here, select 2351 anamorphic. And look, look what tool bags we are now. We didn't shoot anamorphic, but people are going to think we did. Uh, go in here, and now we can uh, position, mess with the position of our pre comp down here so that, you know. It moves correctly within the frame now that, you know, Ben's head doesn't cut off. We don't have weird head space. Now we render it. Take an app while it renders. And it ends up looking pretty sweet. Thanks, Seth. If you enjoyed this tutorial and you want to learn more about Seth and his work, check out his site, at sethworley.com. There's great stuff there, including his web series, Adventure Now, and The Time Closet. Don't forget, you can always download a free trial of any of the Red Giant products that Seth used in this video at redgiantsoftware.com. And you can get tons of free presets for Red Giant plugins on redgiantpeople.com. In fact, Seth has been putting up a bunch of presets that he's created through his work as a director and as both a visual effects and motion graphics artist. Speaking of free, check out Colorista Free and LUT Buddy two free color correction plugins that we're giving away for, that's right, free. You can find those at redgiantsoftware.com. Finally, I want to mention that if you're looking to keep up with what we're doing at Red Giant, whether it's a tutorial, a contest, a product release, or whatever, just follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and on our blog. Once again, I'm Aaron Rabinowitz for redgianttv.com. See you next time.